You've all got this long running joke that I only build blue suburban houses in The Sims, and I'm not gonna deny that, okay? I do build a lot of things that are blue. I still firmly believe it's because so many of the items in this game have blue swatches. There's not really that much that matches in The Sims 4, but pretty much everything is gonna come in blue, especially when I'm trying to do base game builds because the blue color is like the most inoffensive of the base game set of swatches. I'm I'm telling you all of this just to set us up for today's build because today we are going to fully commit to the bit. We are not just building one blue suburban, I'm going to build four all on one lot. The idea is to build an entire neighborhood of blue suburbans. This is going to be a long one, so I'm just gonna dive straight into the speed build. We're building this on the 50 by 50 lot in Willow Creek. I was trying to think what the most appropriate place for a blue suburban neighborhood would be, and, and this just felt right? So we're on the biggest lot in Willow Creek. It's up next to where the Spencer Kim Lewis family lives. The main focal point of this build is the street, so that's where I started. I just put a big giant slab of concrete down in the middle of the building, and then I tried to figure out where I could fit four houses around it. I wanted to have two on each side, and then maybe like a park space or some sort of neighborhood community space at the end of the road. I had a long wish list, and you would think that a 50 by 50 lot would be big enough, but if anything, this was maybe a little bit on the small side. All of the houses are relatively small too, they're about three or four bedrooms each, but every single house has its own garage and its own backyard. I was trying to channel like ultimate suburbia and I felt like a garage was a necessity for that, especially because we have this big street, so like everybody has a driveway, they've got cars parked on the road and in their driveway, and it was kind of fun to decorate too because they all have their own garage, but I tried to furnish them all very differently. Like they're all blue on the outside and primarily blue on the inside, but like different kinds of blue and different styles. I'm pretending that somebody who loves the beach lives in one of the houses, so they have a lot of like light colors, light blues. Someone else is like a librarian, so they've got a lot of dark wood and dark blues. And then I tried to decorate each garage differently as well, so like one of them has a gym in it, one of them has laundry in it, somebody else has an art studio in their garage. And this whole thing is being built to become a residential rental with the new rent pack. So if you wanted to, you could play here and live in just one of these houses and then have neighbors in every single one of the other ones. I like the idea of living here and maybe having like your Sims family live nearby as well. So you could have like grandma live down the road in the same house street as you. This is the kind of thing that I have been daydreaming about since we first got The Sims 4. Dare I say, since I used to play The Sims 3 when I was a kid, I love the idea of making fake little neighborhoods and building multiple houses on one lot. So like this rent pack has completely changed my life. It is all I want to build with now. I know I keep making these like big giant rental builds, but I just, I have so many ideas. <laughs> we did a few weeks ago a big horse neighborhood. That one kind of started out as a meme too, because I kept calling it my horse apartments, and the idea of a horse apartment is like really silly. <laughs> and then this one of course is just embracing the blue suburban thing. But the horse ones were a little bit different, because that was three houses and a shared barn, kind of on like a windy dirt road. This one is like a more formal suburban street instead, so it's been kind of fun to envision how differently these houses would be laid out and stuff. So right now, as you can see, we built the shells of two of the houses and we're working on the third one. I was trying to make them all slightly different variants of like classic shapes that I like to build. <laughs> so the first one in the front left corner is like the Simsy Blue Suburban, like the standard shape that I do for like a starter home, for example. One of them is more of a craftsman style, one's got more of like a Dutch colonial thing going on with it. Two of them have detached garages and the other two have garages that are attached. I was really just trying to vary the layouts and the shapes the best that I could to make them look more different. It's hard when you're building four houses right next to each other that all have the same color scheme, so I was really trying to do my best to give them some variety. If you want to go back and watch me build the entire thing from start to finish, not sped up and with nothing cut out, I actually did a live stream this over on my Twitch channel. It took us many, many, many days. <laughs> 
This was a multi-day sort of project, as you can imagine, because it is four houses, so it wasn't like an easy one to finish. Twitch building streams are really fun because you can be there and give like live feedback to what we're working on as we're still doing it, because you can always comment and be like, oh, Kayla, you should have tried this, <laughs> you know, in the YouTube video, but it's just too late at that point, kind of, for this build at least, because I already finished it, I already put it on the gallery. But in Twitch chat, you could tell me that suggestion live, and then I could be like, oh my god, you're so right, why didn't I think of that? And then we can update it. And of course, it's easier to have like longer form content, because I can't very well post like a 12 hour long speed build here on YouTube, can I? No. <laughs> no, that's just too much. My husband Dan edits my videos, and my friend Hope does the closed captions, and they're probably both like, no, <laughs> no, you don't need to do that, Kayla. 12 is too much, uh, I'll admit it. So that's why I speed them up and then cut out some unimportant things. In this video, I'm showing you the furnishing of two of the houses. So we build the exteriors of all of them and then I furnish half of them in this video. And at the end, I'll show you a tour of the other two. When I first sped it up, it was like two and a half hours long and that was too much. <laughs> that was like two hours too much, I would say. So I tried to trim it a little bit. But back to the live footage for a second. At this point, we are working on the shell of the fourth and final house, which I think is probably my least favorite. <laughs> it's also the biggest. The other three are more classic build styles that I'll follow. With this one, I was trying to go for more realistic modern house. And not like modern modern house, but like modern as in built in 2023. <laughs> like the kind of McMansion-y, probably too many roofs, weird shape, but looks nice expensive, probably really fancy new build. <laughs> That's what I was doing with this one. It also has a screened in porch on the back, which I really enjoyed. I live in Florida, unfortunately, <laughs> and screened in porches are really common here. They're like all over the place. Every house that I have ever lived in has a screened in porch. Sometimes they put full on like screen cages over like your whole back patio, especially if the house has a pool. If you don't believe me, you can Google it. Look up like Florida pool screen. You'll be horrified if you haven't ever seen one of these before. It's like a mesh texture stretched over a metal frame. They do it to keep like bugs and little critters out, but also to keep like leaves out of your pool, I guess, if you have a pool. I would never do like a full on giant pool screen for my Sims, but it's nice to have a little screened in porch at least. They have these windows that came in the greenhouse kit and they've got a glass swatch, but also a screen swatch. So I use those. I'm sorry if I sound silly explaining the screen thing so much, by the way, because I know that most of you probably know about this, but when I stream this stuff and I talk about screens, half the chat is like, why? Why do you have a glass box around your pool? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, it's not glass, it's just mesh. So I'm given some much needed context, I think, because not everybody lives in places that have screens like this. Now, back to the road for a second also. I really struggled with what I wanted to do in the road. I wasn't sure how formal it should be. There were a few things that I knew I wanted to have, things like the fire hydrants from Debug. I wanted to have some trees kind of lining the street. I wanted to have street lights. And I decided on having some kind of fancy street lights that have flowers in them. I don't know if realistically you would find this <laughs> in a neighborhood like this. Those those lamps look kind of like what you would see in, I don't know, like a public area, like outside of a museum or something. <laughs> At least to me, I have never seen fancy plants hanging from the streetlights in just like a regular neighborhood. But this is a beautiful fancy neighborhood and I can do whatever I want because it's The Sims. <laughs> so I used the pretty yellow flowers hanging from them. I just struggled a lot with where to put them. We initially talked about having them be like even across the whole street. We tried staggering them and having them like every other spot to more evenly light. It. It, it took me a while to figure out where to put them. This is one of those times where I was maybe overthinking it. Like, it's just a street light, <laughs> but I was really putting way too much thought into where it should go and how it should look. If you haven't already caught on, I feel very strongly about my blue suburban neighborhood and I wanted it to be perfect, <laughs> so I was doing what I could. While I was streaming this, we kept making jokes about how this neighborhood is definitely an HOA. So we'd be like, oh, you know, the HOA would certainly not allow this. Or like, oh, the HOA is forcing them to do this, especially with like the wall paint and all that sort of stuff. The HOA in this neighborhood requires that everything be blue. It's it's a rule, it's in the bylaws, you can't change it. If you do, they'll fine you. If you're not familiar with an HOA, this is the just absolute dumbest thing. If It's gonna shock you if you're from somewhere else that doesn't have these. An HOA is a homeowners association, and a lot of times in neighborhoods like this, where like all the houses were built all at once, they might form an HOA, and you have to pay like a monthly, maybe quarterly fee to the HOA 
away and then they can tell you what to do with your property. <laughs> they can say, oh, that's not an approved paint color or like try to fine you if you don't bring your trash cans in fast enough. They might have like required different types of plants and you can't landscape outside of like that list of plants, you know, stuff like that. People say the good thing about HOAs is they like keep up the property value because it forces your neighbors to like upkeep their homes. Sometimes HOAs also do like relatively useful things. Like I lived in a townhouse for a long time and a townhouse makes more sense for an HOA because you don't own like the exterior of the building. It's, you know, you have just the inside and you share walls with everybody. And in that townhouse, people paid HOA fees and the townhouse association would pay for like landscaping companies to mow the grass in between the buildings because like nobody owned that grass, you know? So like HOA fees might cover stuff like that. But generally HOAs have a really negative association. They kind of have like bully vibes a little bit because there will be sometimes like mean neighbors that run the HOA <laughs> that just walk around the neighborhood looking for things to try and yell at people about. One time in my townhouse, they sent out letters to every person in the entire neighborhood telling them to stop letting their kids play on the sidewalks. Here's what I don't understand. We don't have yards. <laughs> like we live in a very small townhouse community. People, we don't have outdoor space. And you're sending out letters saying, oh, the kids aren't allowed to play on the sidewalks. Where do they play? The street? Like that's not, this is a busy road. I don't, oh my God. So that's the kind of thing that I associate HOAs with. Just like ridiculous letters and regulations and rules. So they kind of get made fun of a lot and complained about a lot for stuff like that. And also HOAs in general have a very racist history. They were like originally made so that they could exclude people from being able to buy in a certain community. So all of that to say HOAs are bad. However, I think that this neighborhood 100% without a doubt would have one. I don't know too much about what it's like where you're from, but where I'm from in Florida, oh my God, it's nearly impossible to find a house that isn't in an HOA. Like they are everywhere. And especially in a new development like this, because they built all of these houses together, like probably one guy built all of them and they would absolutely have formed an HOA at that point. But anyway, we're working on decorating the outside and putting in some windows now, finally. On this house, I was thinking about trying to do some yellow shutters. I was kind of trying to decide if it would be nice to have some accent colors that weren't blue. Initially, I was thinking, yes, that would be cool. And then I realized, no, that's not in the spirit of the blue suburban neighborhood and the HOA would never approve yellow shutters. <laughs> so I did end up switching them back. I get it. Some people liked the yellow shutters in my stream. I liked them too, but I, I think that the yellow shutters are good for a different occasion. You know, like today is for the blue suburban. We don't need to have yellow. Like that's just not right. But this house that we're doing the windows on, this sort of like craftsman style house, this is the one that becomes the beach inspired house, which sounds kind of funny when I say it out loud because this is not a beach house and it's not a beach. This neighborhood is like so, so suburban. But I liked the idea of the person who lives here being obsessed with the beach. So they've got like beach photos on their wall. They've got like beachy color schemes. <laughs> it's very live, laugh, love and like coastline inspired on the inside, which we'll get to in a minute. It's also clearly very small. These houses aren't really that big. Looking at the top down overview, I'm like, wow, this place is kind of little. But I did manage to fit at least three bedrooms in every single one of the houses. Plus they all have the garage space and the garage is a great like flex space to have access to. I was kind of describing earlier how I tried to put different skill building items in each of them, but it is really useful to have those fake garages. I need to make more of an effort to include them in my builds that I'm actually playing in because I just so often have all these random items that I want to have. Like you want to have all these skill building things. The kids want like science tables. It's, sometimes there's just not space for that in your house. The garage is perfect for that. Cupcake machine, just throw it in the garage. Normally I just end up putting it in the front yard and I learned my lesson with that recently. I, like many of you, often have my Sims children do a lot of school projects. I don't really even have them do their homework. I pretty much only have them do school projects because it builds skill and then they get the bonus extra credit so they can get an A still anyway. But I like to play in small houses so I don't usually have enough wide open space in the house to put the project down. What I probably should do is like move the coffee table, okay? But what I do instead is just put it outside and have them work on it outside. Regardless of the weather, I just have the kids go outside and do projects. That's all fun and games and fine. However, <laughs> in my 100 baby challenge, I killed one of my Sims that way. Never in my life, I'm being honest with you right now, never before this have I ever had a Sim accidentally die from a lightning strike. I'll tell you, I have intentionally killed Sims with lightning more than once. And I've pretended that it was an accident. It wasn't. <laughs> I have never before this had a Sim actually accidentally 
accidentally die from lightning because you have to get struck twice for them to die. My Sims get struck by lightning fairly often. It's not like that uncommon, but I've never had them get struck twice in a row. Cut to my 100 baby challenge. I have like a little back porch and I was just sticking all the school projects out there on the porch and I had the sim working on it before school. In that challenge, once you get an A in school, you can age the sims up. So that kid had one day left of school. They were gonna get an A that day. I was like last minute trying to get some extra credit. They were a teen this close to moving out of my household. Of course it was storming like really bad outside and I still had them out there working on the project. They got struck by lightning. Here I was sitting there like, oh my god, my sim just got struck by lightning. And in my immediate panic, I didn't act quick enough and almost Almost instantly they got struck again for a second time and then died all because I had them just working on school projects in the back patio yes it was my fault I probably should have like brought them inside when it was storming I I know okay I get it but lesson learned now in that challenge I've got an entire school project room it's only got school projects in it and it's inside so I'm not gonna have that happen to me again and if you also are like me and you just force your sims to skill build like that maybe Put a roof over their head, you know? Just an idea. Garages, in this case, are a perfect opportunity to do that. <laughs> there is plenty of room for these sorts of things in there, and then no one will get struck by lightning. I actually did have another kind of scary lightning incident recently in my game. This I blame the infants and how glitchy they are for, but you know how your sims when they're taking care of infants, they often will like pick them up and put them down and pick them up and put them down just non-stop. It's very annoying. Well, I was trying to get my legacy challenge sim to feed her baby. I wanted her to bring it and like feed the baby. She was being very difficult and for some reason she brought the baby outside and went and stood out there holding the baby to like try and feed it. And here I was kind of panicking because it was storming really bad outside and I was like, go inside, put the kid to sleep. Like really struggling to get her to go back upstairs and put the kid down in the crib. Well, she finally goes back in. She walks up the stairs, she gets into the nursery, she puts the kid down and then she gets struck by lightning inside the house. I think it's because she technically got struck by lightning when she was outside, like the interaction queued then, but the game wouldn't allow her to be struck with a baby in her arms. So it waited until she put the baby down and then struck her. But at that point she was inside the house. She didn't die or anything and the kid was fine, but it did really scare me. <laughs> Cause the sound of lightning in The Sims is really loud and like genuinely kind of scary. And she was inside. Like it, the lightning bolt just came through the ceiling. Anyway, um, I'm giving a lot of reasons why you should probably keep your Sims inside during storms. <laughs> I have learned my lesson and hopefully you have too. And at this point of the video, we are finally almost done putting all of the windows down on all of the houses. You can see I've gone to great lengths to have all different windows on all the different houses and also paint them differently. They all have a different kind of blue wallpaper. This one has a lot of cats and dogs siding. I used the growing together siding. We've got base game stuff. I, I used all different kinds and textures. I also have all different roofs on all four of these. I was really, really trying to have them be obviously different. I didn't want to have like four cards carbon copies of the same house all next to each other. They might all be blue, but they're different blue, okay? <laughs> they are unique, individual blue suburbans. Also, I just saw my cat out of the corner of my eye. That was Sunny. She was on my desk. She has now ditched me. But if you see any, like, movement behind me, there's three cats in here right now. Or maybe just two. I think Snap left. I've been a bit distracted, so I didn't see. <laughs> Snap was on that chair, but I don't see her there anymore. And speaking of cats, I unfortunately have some terrible news to share about the kittens. I know many of you, including myself, have grown very attached to Shrimp's white whisker. He's an all black cat and he had one white whisker on his face. He was really, really cute and kind of goofy looking. I am so, so sad to announce that Shrimp's white whisker has fallen out. That's normal. Like whiskers fall out, they regrow and stuff. It, it was only a matter of time <laughs> until his his white whisker went away, but it is officially gone. He, he is white whiskerless. He only has black whiskers now. My parents adopted his brother and Sam also has one white whisker whisker and Sam's is still going strong. It hasn't fallen out yet. So I'm a little bit jealous, but it's okay. I'm so sorry to share such sad news here in this video today, but I, I just felt like you should know. <laughs> I felt like I should be keeping you all up to date about the comings and goings of the cat's whiskers. I wonder if it'll grow back. I don't know. I mean, he obviously still has whiskers, but like a, a black one's probably gonna grow in its place. I get asked a lot how Snap is doing with the kittens. If you missed it, I recently adopted two kittens that I found in a sewer <laughs> and I previously had an older cat. She's 15. So she's been taking her time getting used to the babies. And, and like adjusting to them. But over the past few months, she's been doing like worlds better. I try to post a lot of pictures on my Instagram story. So if you follow me over there, you might've seen some of these, but like oftentimes recently, all three cats will be on the bed with me before bed, which a couple months ago would have been unfathomable. <laughs> 
snap. She still doesn't want the kittens to touch her and she gets kind of upset if they get too close to her sometimes. Other times they can sniff her and it's fine. So she's very confusing. I also think that she likes shrimp more than she likes Sunny, but don't tell Sunny that because it makes me feel bad for her. But yeah, Snap's been doing very well. She's she's uh, kind of gotten over her grumpiness for the most part. She has her moments, but <laughs> she's, she's accepted them very well. And that's all that I can ask for because it can be hard to introduce older cats to kittens, especially older female cats. Girls can be a little bit more territorial. So I was expecting this and I'm proud of her. So <laughs> that's my little update. But we are finally moving on to actually start furnishing the houses now. We have spent a very long time just building the exterior and now we're working on the first of the interiors. So this is that beach inspired house that I keep talking about. It's got a lot of light wood. It's got a lot of blues, obviously, <laughs> but also a lot of like peachy accent colors. I allowed myself accent colors on the interiors of houses, but not on the exteriors. Again, the HOA, they don't care what happens inside your house, but they do have approved paint colors for the exterior. <laughs> Although I have heard of HOAs that have like pet restrictions. I've heard of HOAs that say things like, oh, you aren't allowed to have like rodents or, or like reptile pets, or you can only have like a certain number of dogs or cats or whatever. I don't know how they enforce that. I don't know how they would know if you had a lizard, for example. Like, how do they know you have a bearded dragon? This is The Sims though, so there are no, there are no lizards. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that too much. The downstairs of this house is really quite small. So we've got a tiny, tiny, tiny kitchen area, a tiny little dining nook. And then by the staircase, I tried to fit in a very small little desk area. In the kitchen, I used a lot of the Home Chef Hustle Pack stuff. I really, really like the Home Chef Hustle Pack. It has some of, in my opinion, the best kitchen things. It's just, it's so good. I'm so glad they made that pack. They're quite neutral, but they have some fun color swatches. And I think that they could also pass really easily in like a more modern house, but also in a house like this style that's, you know, more just contemporary, I guess. They're a very good kitchen cabinet. I really like them. I'm like always longing for more kitchen sets. And most of the ones that we've been getting recently are all wood. Like you think about the cottage living one, the horse ranch one, it's like so wooden and rustic. It's nice to have more like this vibe. And then I added in this little beach painting. It's like a collage of, of canvases. It's from the kids room stuff pack, believe it or not. And I used that in here. That was kind of like the main inspo for the whole building. I looked at this rug in the living room and then that that painting and I said, okay. <laughs> beach house. And I think they kind of work together nicely. I like the little peachy color scheme and, and the beachy colors. You might see me scroll over to the other builds from time to time when I'm like adding in things I might've forgotten. Don't worry. I, I, at this point of the recording have already furnished another house, but I cut it out of the speed build. The house in the front left corner that I called the most classic Simsy Blue Suburban, I cut that out of the speed build footage because I felt like you've already seen me build that a bunch of times. So I tried to leave in the furnishing of the two that were the most like unique, at least I thought in my opinion. And again, I will show you a full tour and walk around everything at the end of the video. It was kind of fun for me to go through and like dig around and look for beachy stuff that I could use. I found this kind of cool like wicker plant set. I used some of the wicker furniture from Island Living. There's like wicker baskets from Laundry Day. And then Island Living has a bunch of like debug prints of the ocean. There's like little fish ones and little dolphin things and they're kind of small. So I use those in some of the other areas like next to the bedroom door and stuff like that. Downstairs, there is one extra bedroom and a huge bathroom. This house in total has four bedrooms. They're all quite small though. This one downstairs belongs to like one of the older kids and then they have one big bathroom downstairs. Upstairs, there's the primary bedroom and then two other kids' bedrooms plus a very teeny tiny bathroom that's attached to the primary bedroom. I was really trying to maximize the space in here. So I, I did my best to fit some stuff in but you'll see the rooms are quite small. I also had a lot of fun digging for all kinds of various little decor things. There's like fishing lure decorations. There's literal fish. So I was I was really embracing it and putting those things like everywhere on the interior. In the first bedroom, it kind of has like a, almost like a cotton candy pink color scheme because I was trying to match it to the boat wallpaper. Again, really embracing the beach theme wherever I can. <laughs> but the cute boat wallpaper has like some yellow and pink accents. So I used that for one of the kids rooms and I put some little toys in there. I actually use that boat wallpaper way more than you think I would. It, it seems like the kind of thing that would not get used like at all. 
wall and yet somehow all my sims, not all, a lot of my sims have the boat wallpaper. <laughs> I'm really one to go for like the more chaotic wall patterns. When I find something that I think is like maybe objectively weird, it makes me want to use it more often. The other example I would give is like, you know the horrible lime green tile, that lime green swatch on the base game tile? I don't even like that. I don't like the shade of green. The tile is so bright, it's kind of scary. And yet I use it in a lot of my builds, but I, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun to have some kind of ugly wallpaper sometimes. And actually, I don't think this room is ugly. I think it looks really nice together. That's the other fun part about doing a build like this where there's so many bedrooms because the place is absolutely enormous. I got to do a lot of like funky things with the bedroom decorations. Again, back to like the blue thing. When you're using the blue theme as a base, it gives you a chance to really dig around and see what weird stuff we have that is blue and how we can make it work. Like this second kid's room has another kind of funky blue wallpaper. It's got like the hexagons from the university pack. At least I, is that university or high school here? I don't remember. Just whatever. One of the school packs, <laughs> one of the school packs has these little hexagons. So I use that in this kid's bedroom. This one has kind of like a minty color scheme going on with it. It's, it's almost like mint, not so berry vibes. I also have not used this color combo before. So that was kind of a fun thing to find. And now I think I might try that in another build, maybe in like a bigger bedroom where I have some more space to decorate a bit more. It's hard to do like a full decoration in a room this small because you have to have walking space still. So I was trying to make sure we can still get around the place and not put too much decor in here. I am always a big fan of small Sims houses though. I would take a small bedroom over a big one any day because I want the Sims to have like a tight, very decorated, small room. I think that's way more fun than a big, empty, vast space. We are just about done with this first house though. I'm gonna do the rest of the little decor in this kid's room. And then we have the primary bedroom to furnish. And the primary bedroom is also really small, like almost a little bit too tight to even fit a double bed in. I'm not selling this. <laughs> I'm just talking about how small the house is and it's poorly decorated because there's not enough space to decorate. But the primary bedroom is just about the minimum size I would make it and have it still be safe for a double bed. I did manage to fit two nightstands on either side and a dresser in here. And then they have that really tiny ensuite bathroom. It's just a two by two square, which is a little bit smaller than I would normally want. But considering we have four bedrooms in this house, I felt like we kind of needed to have a second bathroom because you've got so many sims living here. When you've got five sims, one toilet, it, it's hard in the morning before school and stuff. I mean, same goes in real life. It's always better to have more bathrooms if you can fit them. So I thought about putting a closet there and then I was like, no, no, you don't need a closet, Kayla. Closets don't do anything in the Sims 4. <laughs> what you need is a toilet. I do wish that I could have managed to fit a toilet upstairs that was like public access for all of the sims, but I, the floor plan just wasn't working for it. But that's pretty much the whole first house finished. So we're moving on to the next house now. You can kind of see in the corner corner off to the left. <laughs> We've got the bright red and blue house. That is the Simsy classic blue suburban that I was talking about. I used a lot of red flowers outside and then a lot of red accents on the inside. It, my chat was calling it the America house and that was so not my intention. I was not trying to do red, white, and blue. That was so not the vibes. It is kind of what happened, but that wasn't that wasn't what I meant, okay? Again, I'll show you that at the end. <laughs> what we're doing right now is the house that belongs to like the librarian. I picture maybe like a librarian married a writer and they live here in this house, big fans of books. And so I put a lot of books everywhere. There's a lot of dark wood in here, so it's very different vibes than the first one. And this one has just, again, books. <laughs> so many books. I'm warning you now, I did make some slightly weird choices with the color scheme of this house. I used a very controversial dining table in here, and people had things to say about it. So hopefully you still like it, but I, I will acknowledge that not everybody did when I was doing the build of this on Twitch. This one, I believe, has three bedrooms and an office, but I can't remember, so we'll see as I'm furnishing it. <laughs> I think there's an extra bedroom downstairs though. This house has a couple kind of weirdly shaped rooms too. I struggled a bit with the floor plan because the upstairs is quite small. I managed to fit a little teeny tiny three by one bathroom upstairs. Again, not super ideal, but better than not having a bathroom, I would say. So I put it up there just to have a second toilet. And they have like a weird long skinny bedroom as well upstairs. There is a bigger bathroom downstairs, thankfully. And the office, if necessary, is only 
only three by three, so you probably could make that into a second bathroom as well, but I'd rather have an office. <laughs> I'd rather have a desk and stuff. So in here, I used my favorite counters, the parenthood counters in the kitchen. I think this is a good example of how The Sims puts a blue swatch on everything. These counters come in a bunch of neutral swatches, like there's white and beige and gray and black, and then it comes in three actual colors. There's like a minty color with a really weird orangey brown countertop, and then there's two blue swatches. And the mint could almost pass as blue, I would argue. So it comes in all plain neutrals and then blue. <laughs> the Sims puts blue on everything. That's why all my builds are blue, okay? I swear. It's, I don't even like blue that much. <laughs> I wouldn't even say it's my favorite color. It's not even my top five favorite colors. There's like a lot of teal and gray going on in this building. I was inspired by the leafy swatch of that rug from the rent pack. And then I found this really nice like teal polka dot swatch on those cottage living chairs. I'll tell you now, I ended up swapping the table to be the movie hangout one that has like a table runner on it. And that's what people hated. <laughs> they hated the table runner. I thought it was kind of fun and I don't normally use that item. So it was kind of nice to have a chance to, but I get it if you don't like it, it's okay. I'm not offended, I, I understand. I I know that what I've done is controversial, so. So anyway, downstairs, we've got the tiny, tiny, tiny office, and then we have a tiny bedroom as well. In the office, I've got like one wall of bookshelves and then one small desk in here. I don't normally put offices in houses this small. I usually just try to find a, a nook somewhere to put a desk, but I felt like because in my, in my vision, these Sims were like writers, it was nice to have a proper office space for them, even if it's like kind of maybe a slight waste of space. <laughs> it's still nice to have. So the movie hangout table in question has a kind of funky pattern on the table runner. I went through a couple different options and tried to pick which one I thought was best. There's actually a lot of teal minty colors in this game too, so I was trying to use those in a few places. Like I was saying earlier, this has been a very interesting exercise because I found a lot of swatches of things that I kind of forgot about. There actually is a shocking amount of minty colored swatches on things too, and I always think whenever I see minty colored swatches on stuff, it makes me think of Not So Berry. Not So Berry is a legacy challenge that I wrote like ages ago in like 2017. But in it, every generation is a different color theme and the first generation is mint. And mint is kind of a weird color. It's like a greeny blue. <laughs> and so whenever I see mint things in the game, I'm like, oh my God, this has been here all along and I forgot. One thing to this day, I still struggle with so much in like every single build though is rug swatches. I had the hardest time in here, probably underneath the dining table and in the office. I really didn't know what I should use and so I tried a lot of different variations. We always need more rugs. I think that's probably my number one request right now is more rugs and more curtains. If the base game could get another set of curtains that are like the nice ones from the, the newer packs, like the Desert Luxe Kit curtains or something, we just, we, we need some more neutrals, some nice simple stuff that will fit in a lot of different areas. I am desperate for it. We've been struggling for a long time and the, the rug situation is very dire. Now that I've picked that runner though, I've decided to add some more vibrant colors in here through like the wall decor and stuff like that. And then next to the fireplace, I wanted to have a little set of built-ins. I could only do it on one side because the fireplace is next to the door and we need the door. So <laughs> just on the left, I've got some built-ins and I ended up using a cabinet and like some shelves basically. I think it looks really cute, but I'm warning you, it does clip to the outside. So you'll see once I start doing it, <laughs> it's kind of bad. I, I tried to go through and like hide it a bit. So I was like putting some decorations on top of it to try and cover it up and you can still see it from the outside, but that's okay. It's because it's only one and a half tiles. So I put like two tile wide built-ins there, which for some reason I still haven't done yet. I'm trying. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted, but there's just, it's so small. <laughs> the whole house is so small. So it took me a long time, but in the end, cabinets and then a shelf on top and some cute decor. I tried to cover the clipping a bit by putting a chair on the inside and then like a pergola on the outside and just hope that you don't notice. I probably shouldn't even be putting it out because because that just makes it worse, because now you know. <laughs> but it's it's good to be honest, right? And there is clipping. It's purely decorative though, and I don't really care if, if like decorative stuff clips too much. It's obviously a problem when things that need to be functional are clipping, but this is like fake cabinets, a fake shelf, <laughs> and just some fake little stuff on top. So it's really no problem. I do think it looks really nice though next to the fireplace like this. I think it's kind of realistic as well. Saying that, I don't know much about fireplaces. <laughs> 
<laughs> I live in Florida. And if you're wondering what that painting above the fireplace is, that is actually a TV. It's from the Modern Lux kit. It's it's like a frame TV. I don't know if you've heard of these before, but there's a company called Samsung that makes TVs that are basically completely flat against the wall. They're like this wide and they have a frame around them and you can turn them off and it displays a picture. I don't know much about them, but I think that the picture is not as inefficient as you think it would be. I think they're still pretty energy efficient. I don't think it's too much to display like a, a single flat image. It's kind of like how when you turn off a Kindle, it leaves the book cover on. Like a Kindle never has a blank screen screen, it, it leaves like the ads or the book cover on the top. That's how I picture those frame TVs work, but I don't really know much about it, so don't ask me questions about it. <laughs> they're also really expensive, but they're kind of cool, so it's fun that we have one in The Sims. It's easy to like fit the frame TV into gallery walls, and it looks a bit better when you hang it up over a fireplace and stuff. I know that it's very controversial to hang up TVs over fireplaces, but sometimes it's just the only place that fits it in the room, so your Sims aren't gonna complain about the TV being too high. They'll be fine, so you'll be fine too. Most of the downstairs, at least the main living area, is done now though. We're just going through and trying to figure out some last minute decor touches. I sort of last minute decided to have these sims have a cat, so I had to find a place for a litter box and I put it inside of the office space. And now we're finally starting to decorate the bedrooms. I had some bold ideas for these. I knew I wanted to use the leaf wallpaper in the primary bedroom. I didn't have a single clue what to pair with it though. And I wanted to have a nice rug, but it was really hard to figure out what worked the best. I ended up using a horse ranch rug and a dream home decorator bed and I actually think the vibes in this room are really nice. <laughs> I think it's really really pretty in there. It's definitely prettier than I thought it would be. It's kind of a vibrant wallpaper so I was nervous that it would be too much but I think it came together pretty nicely and then I put in like dressers and stuff which helped to separate it. There is an extra desk upstairs too because I figured both sims probably need to have an office space. Computers are so useful in this game. So many sims need it for skill building so I, I try to include a lot of them. There are some very teeny tiny tiny little dormers in this house. And these are like absolutely perfect for cat trees. So I put a little cat tree in there. Literally as we speak, cat on tree <laughs> in my room in real life, sitting in front of the window. So I just, I was channeling that for the cat of this Sims house. And now you can see a little bit better that tiny, tiny skinny room that I was talking to you about earlier. It's kind of a weird shape in here. I only managed to fit one single bed. It's definitely quite small and like way, way smaller than normal. I think on a normal day, I would probably end up making this into an ensuite bathroom for the primary bedroom, but I decided it might be more fun to try and fit an extra bedroom in here. I really like the idea of this neighborhood being very lively and like having a lot of kids that live nearby, because then if you lived here, you'd have a lot of neighbor kids to be friends with, and so I wanted to have the extra kids bedroom. This one could be like a slightly older kid, maybe like a teen or something. I put like desks and dressers and stuff in the dormers. It's kind of hard because they're so small, you don't really know what you can fit that easily. <laughs> It would certainly be nice if you could actually sit there in the window and have a desk right there. I don't know if it works that well though for your Sims. I've tried it before. It's kind of tight. <laughs> That's the theme of this room though. It's just kind of tight. The wallpaper is also a little bit bright for me. I don't know if I love it, but I tried to tone it down with some accent colors. We have that like dream home decorator triangle accent wall behind the bed. We've got some pretty posters and stuff everywhere. You know, now that I'm staring at this, I'm really starting to think that I should have worn a blue shirt for this video. <laughs> Huge missed opportunity opportunity. I could have had blue lights behind me. I don't know what I was thinking. I just kept my same shirt on. That was not very smart. I'm sorry everybody for letting you down. Next time. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to build a second blue suburban neighborhood. <laughs> we spend the next 12 hours doing it again. Actually saying that, I'm curious to know if you have any ideas for like other big builds that we should try. We've done a couple neighborhoods like this now and a lot of townhouses. Ever since we got the castle pack, I've been kind of inspired by the thought of doing some sort of like village situation, like a, a small set of farmhouses all together. I love the concept of like a castle or, or like some sort of you know, primary building and then some small little houses and farms around it. But I don't know if I'm doing too many castle builds. <laughs> I almost posted a castle build yesterday, but then I asked Dan and he said that it was too many, so I shouldn't. So I didn't, but maybe in a couple days I will. <laughs> I kind of want to. This castle pack has changed my life. I didn't think it would, but it's been fun. Dan is my husband, by the way, in case that wasn't clear. He also streams on Twitch if you want to go follow him. His name's just Duck Dan on Twitch. I can link it down below for you. He's going to be editing this video and then want to cut that out probably, but his name's just Duck 
stuff Dan on Twitch. And my name is just Lil Simsy on Twitch, and you can come by if you want to. You don't have to, but you could. We are finally almost done with the speed build though. I'm kind of starting to wrap up here and put some last minute details outside. This house has like a really cute pergola area with some blue chairs <laughs> underneath it. Obviously, it also has a hot tub back here. I tried to really give them all a very unique individual backyards. I also love the idea of your Sims maybe like coming over and hanging out in the neighbor's backyard or like having a party in one of the backyards. I just, I, I have so many visions of how I would like to play in this house. <laughs> and yet I'm probably never gonna play in it. Whenever I do this, I make these huge builds with these great ideas of how I want to play with them. But then I only play with like two different saves normally. I've got one YouTube series and one Twitch series. And when those Sims need a new house, I'm not gonna move them here. I might build a thing like this, but I'm gonna build a whole new one. <laughs> I'll do the whole thing again. I just like to build. Building is the fun part for me. So I, I like to do it a lot and I, I do it you know, more than I need to. I build a lot more houses than I actually need to play in. The last little thing of the speed build though is just this last garage. This is like the most classic garage garage, I think. I tried to put in things like the electrical fuse box. They've got some laundry in here in the garage. I put some storage in here. They have like their Christmas decorations. And I also parked some kids bikes because I love the idea of the kids riding bikes around in the road out here. Don't tell my old townhouse that. They'll be like, no, the kids can't play outside <laughs> and send some mean letter about it. But anyway, we are a officially, finally done with the speed build. So what I want to do now is go and pop into the game and give you a full tour of the finished product. So I built this here on Oakenstead on this big 50 by 50 lot in Willow Creek. And I actually uploaded three versions of this to the gallery. There's an unfurnished one because some people from my chat wanted it before I had finished it. So I was like, I'll just upload it now. I've got a completely furnished one that's classed as a regular residential lot type. And then I also have a residential rental lot type because I found out that if you don't have the rent pack, you literally cannot download these residential rental lots. Normally, if you're missing a lot type from a pack, it just changes it and do a different one. But with the residential rentals specifically, if you don't have for rent, you can't use it, which is really annoying. <laughs> so I uploaded it as just a plain residential as well, just in case you don't have the pack. You do need a lot of packs for this build, like a sickening number of packs. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It is four houses and I, I really went so, I went so far overboard. But anyway, let me place this really quick. Nope, let me switch the lot type, turn on move objects. And now I will place it really quickly. Hopefully it doesn't crash. I don't trust this game. Oh my God, it's been going on for a really long time. Okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Okay, we're fine, <laughs> it did place. So one of the other weird things is that the front of the house is actually the side of these two buildings. So I was trying really hard to have it look good from the side, I don't know if it does but I did I did think about that when I was doing it. Here's kind of a broad general overview of the whole building. And you watched me furnish these two houses, this one on the right corner and this one in the back left corner. Here's kind of a, a shot of the street. You can see I put things like hopscotch out here. I tried to get some like fuse box type stuff. We've got some cars parked on the road down this way. In the way back, they have a shared set of mailboxes. This is how my townhouse was. We had a mailbox kind of like this for everybody's houses just outside like at the end of the road somewhere. So I put their mailboxes down here and then they also have kind of like a shared little park back this way. They've got a community tree house. They've got a little grill and picnic table. And then we also have some monkey bars. I just wanted to try and make use of this back space. And I like the idea of pretending they have a park. I don't know how realistic it is to have a tree house back there, but you can't fit them in the backyards because it's too big. So we may as well try, okay? <laughs> some other kind of cute things about the street. I tried to even add in things like fire hydrants around the place. And and hopefully how I've ended the road isn't too weird. It's not that uncommon to have dead ends of streets in real life. It might make more sense to have like a cul-de-sac kind of thing, but I, it's the Sims. Round stuff doesn't work with the Sims, so I just didn't bother. And then we had more space this way to have the park. Okay, but first I'm gonna start here in this house. This one I classed as being number one. This is what I keep calling the blue suburban to end all blue suburbans. It's like the classic shape that I always do. If I build a starter home, you can bet it probably probably is shaped like this. <laughs> but this one has that red, white, and blue color scheme by accident. Uh, they have a small driveway here. They have things like a football and a trash can. And when you first walk in their front door, we've got a really small little entryway right here. I put like some keys on the wall and some cute artwork. Then you enter further into where they have the dining table. We've got like a food bowl for the pets. I did not forget a thermostat. <laughs> They've got a really cute kitchen with the blue color scheme here. I've got like an unfinished little cleaning closet right here. And then we have this nice big living room. Room. I really like how the built-ins look and I did some class 
classic things like this. I used to put this paddle wheel boat in every single one of my builds. It was like my thing. I don't know why. I always put it usually on fireplace mantles. So I put that here as like a little nod to my past self. <laughs> I like the living room best in here, I think. I feel like it's really cozy down here. They also have access to the garage and this garage is like very garage. They have laundry, they have a treadmill, and then they have this little woodworking table. They also have a door that leads you to the backyard from here. So you can access the backyard from this door or from the sliding door right here. We've got a super cute patio with red chairs. And then we have this fun backyard stuff table runner that kind of brings the red and blue together. They've got some little garden planters. They also have an extra set of monkey bars. And because this is open, other Sims can access this backyard. So like the other neighbors can get back here technically. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing to you. It doesn't bother me. I kind of like the idea of the neighbors being back here, but it might annoy you. So just, you know, something to consider. You might want to close this off if you're playing in the house. And then if you come back in, you can go up the stairs right here. We have a small little hallway. I tried to put like a bunch of skill stuff everywhere. So we've got a bonsai tree. They do have a tiny nursery for a baby. We've got one small kid's bedroom and they have a closet. It kind of has a, a fun rainbow color scheme going on in here. I tried to use a lot of funky colors. And then we have that last primary bedroom. There's one bathroom upstairs and then one extra bathroom downstairs. So in total, it's a two bed, three bed, two, no, <laughs> two bath, three bed house. I almost said bed twice. I really don't like red. It's my least favorite color. So I was proud of myself for trying to make it work in here. <laughs> but that's the first house. The second house is this one across the street. This is the beach house that we furnished together. Theirs is a bit different because they have a detached garage. This one kind of has like craftsman vibes to it. I really like how I put this basketball hoop on top of the garage. I will tell you it's technically too high up. So I don't think your Sims can use it, but it looks realistic to me. So I put it there. They also have things like water balloons and extra basketball. They've got a car parked in their driveway. They have a little front yard space where I put some extra planters. I was trying to do things to make it look cuter on the gallery and that included putting this in. So <laughs> they've got a small garden in their front yard. When you first walk into this house, there's a small little front door we've got on one side, a very tiny living room, lots of fish things going on. We've got fishing gear everywhere. They've got a really tiny kitchen too. I couldn't clutter this as much because they only have two free counters. So your Sims have to cook here. So I couldn't put anything on it. And they have a small dining table, not really a lot of living space down here, but they do have a little tiny office as well right here. And then you can access the downstairs bedroom. It kind of has like teenage or who likes to craft vibes. <laughs> so they have like a little crafting cart. They've got yarn, some things they've made stuff like that down here. And then in here, we've got the biggest bathroom of the house. Uh-oh. Oh no, it's just sitting there in the middle for no reason. Oh, that's very embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, well, bathroom. Here's some of those like fish pictures I was talking about. And then when you go upstairs, there's a nice open stair landing. We've got the small primary bedroom and their teeny tiny ensuite bathroom. It does have a shower still, so that's lucky. We've got the older kids room with the crafty stuff again. And then we have that kind of cute boat themed kids bedroom as well. In their backyard, you go through this back door and you can access a small patio with a strangely placed set of towels. <laughs> and then you come down the stairs, you can get into their pool. They have these pretty lights hung over it. They also have some more garden stuff back here and a telescope. And then I put a little sandbox in the backyard. I liked the idea of a sand pit for the kids. If you have island living, your Sims can actually play in and make sand castles in any sand terrain paint. So if you have that pack, they can use this. But I also put this tent just to have some more toys back here. These don't work. They are unfortunately debug decorative sand castle stuff, but it looks nice. And then in their garage, they have a car and kind of like an art studio. This is a very crafty family. Maybe one of the adults as a painter and all of their kids like art and stuff as well. But they have things like the decor box, the fuse box, fire alarm stuff, and then just generally some storage in here. Back this way, this house is the second one that we built on camera. This one is probably my favorite exterior. I really like how the outside looks. They have a super long driveway to their detached garage. I also put a swing set in the front yard. It's probably not the most realistic thing. That really annoyed a lot of people in my Twitch chat as well. But my thought was like, sometimes people have trees swings in their front yard. So it's not that weird to have a swing set if we pretend it's like that. So I put the swings here. I just wanted to have more stuff, you know? They also have their trash cans right here in the front and I kind of put a little fence to block them. And then when you come in the house in here, we've got a little entryway. We've got the dining table and the cat's dining table as well. <laughs> They've got their small kitchen here right by the front door. And then they have a nice big living room with my favorite part, this little cute built-in area. Please disregard the fact that the shelf is visible from the outside. I tried to put the grill there so you can't tell. You can definitely tell, but just don't think about it, okay? <laughs> 
they have their office downstairs. The cat has their litter box here. And then we have this kind of cute like twin kids room with the bunk beds down here. I don't know if they can actually get to this dinosaur, but at least it looks cute, you know? Sometimes you just gotta prioritize decoration over function. <laughs> <laughs> they have one bathroom downstairs. It's quite small, but it works. And then when you go upstairs, we've got a super tiny bathroom. There's not a lot of bathroom space in here. Your Sims can walk here, don't worry. I do these like three by one bathrooms all the time. And there is a shower. It's like a wet room, basically. This is the primary bedroom. I think my favorite part of the house. I really like how the colors work together in here. And then we have that second kid's room. Kind of weird shape, but it also works. When you go through their sliding doors into the backyard, I love this patio space underneath the pergola. I think that this table set looks so good together. They also have a little chess table. We've got a hot tub. We've got some planter boxes, some more planter boxes, and this is a bird feeder. They even have wind chimes. I tried to use a bunch of things like that around here. And then in their garage, they have like laundry, storage, and bikes down here. <laughs> and if you go back across the street to their neighbor's house, this is the one that I did not show you here in the video. They've got a really small driveway. So I put the marble stuff down here and like a soccer ball. They also have some bikes parked outside. When you walk up to their front porch, they've got this kind of cute flower lined pathway and a little rocking chair outside. And I pictured that this sim was like maybe a scientist and it's the biggest family home. So we've got a lot of kids stuff in here. You walk straight into the dining room and then to the right, we have a really big, big living room set up and a nice galley style kitchen. They also have a little playroom sort of gated off for the babies. <laughs> my chat kept calling it baby jail. That was not my intention, but it does kind of look like that. It's meant to be like safe for them, you know? Um, but maybe it's weird, I don't know. <laughs> but I made this little baby section. I wasn't sure if the color scheme worked in here. It's like kind of blue and yellow and beige, but hopefully not in a bad way. They've got a nice big bathroom downstairs. And then down at the end of this hall, I pictured this being kind of like a guest room maybe. And there's a bathroom down here as well. Maybe like grandma comes and stays and, <laughs> and she stays in there. And then in the garage, it's kind of like a lab space. So they have a bunch of the like microscope stuff. We got this science lab stuff and like some various utility type things. I never put this in my builds. It's so hard to fit it. So I was pretty proud to have it be fit in here. <laughs> um, down here, you can also access their screened in porch. What is that? Did the swatch change on its own? Oh, I'm horrified. That's not supposed to be that. Well, anyway, they've got a grill and a table and like a ceiling fan on their screened in porch. They also have a huge pool with some pretty lights over it. And I use these grilled cheese chairs. I've never used that, but I thought it kind of worked down here. <laughs> they've got like a monkey bar set, a telescope. We've got some more planter boxes. And they have another one of those tents back here. I don't know why I use so many of them, but it kind of works. If you go back inside and up the stairs, we've got a nice long skinny hallway. There's like a little desk in this nook right here. I pictured this one as being kind of a teen's room. And this rug is from Movie Hangout. I always forget about this item. I tried to use that as the main inspiration for the whole room's color theme. And I kind of liked it. It's a nice teen's room. We also have this kind of cute cloud themed toddler's room. <laughs> so I put like cloud stuff everywhere everywhere. Cloud rug, cloud lights. There's even a cloud wallpaper, cloud shelf. <laughs> I really embrace the cloud thing. There is one extra bathroom upstairs. So it's a three bathroom, four bedroom house. And then we have the primary bedroom here. And I decided to add an extra crib in the primary bedroom, kind of like they've built a nursery in there. Maybe, maybe they're pregnant and they're expecting a baby. Maybe they have an infant. Oftentimes when I play The Sims, I have like the grandparents living with me. And sometimes I'm kind of just waiting for them to die so I can move the baby into their room. <laughs> which sounds so bad when I say it, but like maybe that's what's happening here because that's kind of how I play this game. <laughs> but that my friends is the fully finished four house blue suburban neighborhood. I know this video is extremely long. I'm so sorry, but hopefully you enjoyed it. I've done quite a few big builds like this on YouTube recently. So if you want to watch one of those, I'll link one on the end card for you. And if you want to watch me build this kind of thing live, I stream every day except Sundays over on my Twitch channel. And we do a lot of building over there. So make sure you come check it out. Thank you for watching. Have the best rest of your day and I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. This might be the longest it's ever taken me to record a speed build voiceover. For some reason, I am just not doing a good job today. <laughs>